Director Matthew Kasovitz said that his motivation to tell a story true to life was inspired by real events that were transpiring around him. He said that the story was to be about a group of boys, one of them unaware that that day was to be his last. That story is the story of Lehen. A film with a very unique characteristic due to its eclectic variety of styles, The Hen is a movie not so easily categorised into any genre. Simultaneously, it's a project so ingrained with its socio-political messages that often when it's brought up in discussion, its relevance to current events seems to be the driving force and, and, of the conversation. And, 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 the, and, and the, the politicians were like, hey, they shouldn't have run. You know, so it's not... It's... Do you think that justified all that trouble all over France for three weeks? If you disrespect people, don't expect respect back. And important though these conversations may be, that isn't what I plan to discuss. What I want to examine is this movie structure. How and why does La Hen tell its story the way that it does? What impresses me more than anything about this movie is how within a 95 minute time frame, the film succeeds in formulating a constant rising tension amidst a plot constructed to show us nothing. What we end up seeing is essentially just a day in the life of these characters, with no major events for 90% of the film. La Hen is almost a plotless movie, but it's one that utilises a very intentional narrative structure. And you soon realise that there's a lot of depth in what has become a sobering modern masterpiece. First of all, let's analyse the plot of La Hen. How does it conduct its series of events? Now, I should probably explain the term plot, as the word can be divisive in itself, often becoming confused with multiple meanings. But its correct definition is the actual sequence of events that occurs. Think of story as a synopsis of the entire narrative and plot as a walkthrough of the key points within the story. In short, plot is what happens. And regardless of medium, the most common method that our characters are pushed along through the plot is by some manner of cause and effect. You develop a connected chronology as the result of one incident directly influences the next. A simple example is Sam and Frodo are travelling alone because they were separated from their group, because orcs attacked, because their location was given away, and so on. The cause and effect system gives the film a sense of flow and progression. However, in La Hen, cause and effect are so loosely tethered to one another that I wouldn't say that each event is directly influencing the next. This is because La Hen adapts to a different kind of narrative structure. In fact, it's eloquently summed up in the film's opening lines and repeated throughout the movie. Mais l'important, c'est pas la chute. C'est l'atterrissage. This is the metaphor for the plot of La Hen. In an interview with a French magazine, Kasovitz said that he knew his film's ending before he knew anything else, and that the rest of the film was built around those crucial last couple of seconds. What La Hen achieves through this approach is a story that becomes defined by one single moment. Now, Bulgarian essayist Svetan Todorov composed the narrative theory of the equilibrium. It's composed of various stages and doesn't necessarily lend itself to every film, but for the most part, it's a very adequate and reliable blueprint. It states that narratives begin in a state of equilibrium. Everything in the world is as it should be, a state of unity. An event will then occur that disrupts this unity, destroying the equilibrium. The goal then, from that moment to the narrative resolution, is to establish a new equilibrium. Again, using Lord of the Rings, the opening at the Shire shows our equilibrium, as everything is as it should be. However, upon Bilbo giving the ring to Frodo, this disrupts the order of things, and so the journey from that point is to destroy the ring, and the world concludes in a new state of unity. However, when applying Todorov's theory to La Hen, it merely accentuates the unconventional structure of the movie. Because the ending of the film isn't about creating a newfound unity. We aren't working towards a conclusion, we're working towards shattering the equilibrium. Vince is killed by sheer chance, and that one brief moment renders everything before it completely meaningless. We don't end with a resolution, we end with another disruption of order. 
any unity becomes eradicated once more. And if we were falling up to this point, then this is the landing. But plot lines have been defined by a single moment before. So for the impact of such a cataclysmic event in any story to have the urgency it needs, you need to create something leading up to this moment. Tension. I find that tension in cinema can be heavily derived from time. The most obvious way to gain tension from time is to show that there is a consequence to not achieving your goal before a specific moment. And running out of time doesn't require a literal ticking clock. It can mean the antagonist showing up or finding the character in a life-threatening situation. Think of it like this. Tension rises because goal X has to be achieved before event Y will occur. With La Hen, this begins with a very simple premise. There are two plot devices that balance one another out. Vince has found a gun and the local youth from the high rises is in a coma. Here, the tension is established by how much time can pass before one of these events offsets the other. Will the youth last the night or will Vince's violent tendencies seep into reality? This is a more simplistic way of looking at the situation, but the real filmmaking finesse emerges through the film's management of the passage of time. La Hen feeds us a premise that becomes etched in the back of our minds and lingers like a dark cloud over the following events. So with that information, we need to understand that we are falling closer to the conclusion of this, as tension will be built through emphasising that time is passing us by. Sergio Leone was known for this technique and achieved it through his incredibly long shots. He built anticipation by drawing attention to his film's temporal element. So how does La Hen do this? It shows us. It may seem like a gimmick to some, however, the way in which these timestamps are implemented heavily influence our perception of the events. A large portion of the film's attention is on inconsequential moments, only for them to be interrupted by showing us how much time has passed. These timestamps are just an alternative method to act as that reminder that time is passing by. They therefore highlight the lack of meaning in scenes, as instead of our characters working towards preventing a worst case scenario, all they did was waste precious time. The timestamps not only strengthen time's conceptual aspect, as well as instill a sense of constant progression, but they have a transformative effect to give scenes that seemed insignificant a new sense of urgency. Without that brief reminder, the scene loses that urgency. Tension is created through showing a consequence to not completing a goal, and that by stressing the passage of time, we show that we're moving closer to that possibility. La Hen also builds tension through foreshadowing, with a large reliance on smash cuts, contrasting edits of incredibly high volume with incredibly low volume. <laughs> And the timestamps are even emphasised by the ticking clock we hear. A genius piece of sound design insinuating that the situation is a bomb ready to explode at any moment. All these elements serve to show us that something is about to happen. But the most obvious aspect of La Hen's structure, noticeable on a first viewing, is that it's a film of two halves. Now, with everything else that we've mentioned about this film's unique structure, you might think that this would be damaging to the film's pacing, but it isn't. In fact, the reasoning behind this is a more thematic one. The first half of the movie focuses on the high rises of the banlieue, and almost at the exact midpoint, our main characters transition to the city of Paris. This is used to distinguish a difference between the city and the outskirts, as well as the conflict that rages between them. Possibly the most prevalent theme of La Hen is identity. The three main characters come from backgrounds marginalised in French society, Jewish, Black and Arab. They aren't what would be deemed pure French, and this is what causes the most friction between these two sects of society. Even more so than their lineage, the culture of the high-rises isn't pure French either. La Hen uses the technique of background information to create an environment that our characters are mere products of. Our characters are so in sync with the environment that their names are literally engraved in its surroundings. 
The background feeds us details of the melting pot of cultures imported from around the world. This impacts the characters' topics of conversations. To the language they use. From its use of hip hop to the clothing that's worn, the Bonlieu is an example of the new French identity, a fusion of cultures. Even the filmmaking mirrors this. Mathieu takes a lot from American movies. He said, that's what I grew up with. And uh, my references are not like um, Tarkovsky or uh, Renoir or whatever. My references are Steven Spielberg and they're Spike Lee and they're Martin Scorsese. That's what I grew up in. Those were the movies that moved me and those were the movies that made me want to be a filmmaker because they felt true to my experience. He does, uh, you know, those wonderful Spike Lee tracking shots where you move in on the character very, very fast until you finally get to a close-up exemplified by the final scene in the banlieue of an uninterrupted tracking shot instilling a sense of unification and solidarity emphasized by cut killers Nick la police echoing through the streets we learn that this cultural labyrinth still maintains a sense of unity this is the first half of the film Yet in the second half of the film, Paris has no discernible identity. In fact, in the first shot of Paris, any distinguishable identity it has disappears before our very eyes. And the only landmark representative of where we are does exactly the same. It's only through the film's decision to dissect itself into two halves that these techniques become salient and comparable. The first half is shot in wider angles with very highly composed shots, denoting a sense of structure. Whereas in the city, it's shot mainly on telephoto lenses warping the background and presents much more fragmented staging. There's an increased sense of unease and it's clear that the culture of these characters has made them unwelcome here. But what does all this amount to in the narrative of La Haine? The end result for La Haine is a film that gradually crawls to the eruption of its finale and whose two-part structure emphasises a conflict based on cultural backgrounds. And that technique of foreground versus background may be the key to understanding this movie. I think there's one shot that sums up Le Hen's story. Here, even though Hubert is in the foreground, the dominating factor is the conversation occurring in the background. This is because it's our surroundings that have the biggest influence on us. Our lives are shaped by that which is around us. And the same way that our characters are molded by the multitude of cultures around them, the plot of the movie undergoes the same experience. The entire plot was building up to a single moment that we had no control over. It was decided by an external force. And the film's structure was showing us this from the very beginning, through a very cohesive jigsaw. Are we the ones in control of our own lives? Le Hen suggests that our journeys become meaningless. Because if we don't act to prevent our situation, time will run out and it will be decided for us. All it takes is for one person's actions to destroy everything. All the progress we've made is lost and it takes us right back to the beginning.